You beat the Steiner brothers for your first tag team championship reign. What was it like working with the Steiners? Because I know you had a lot of matches with them. Yeah, it was great. I mean, uh, we did also our first match here at the Montreal Forum against them, and uh, they, they were they were real cooperative. Uh, you know, they they really wanted to have good matches, but uh, uh, they they didn't really want to get pinned. That was the main thing, though. Is that why the Quebec province rules? Well, yeah, the yeah. Then then they kind of get a. He kind of got out of the WWF because they didn't want to get pinned by us, you know, because we were supposed to pin them, you know, and they they refused that, and that kind of gave them heat with the with the office. What was that incident there uh, that you told me about before, where Jacques threw an apple at Scott and it just hit a pole right in front of Scott's head yeah. and exploded? That really was uh, that was a, during a tour in Germany. Uh, Doink and Dink were there, and uh, Rick and Scott, uh, they taped up uh, Dink uh, around a pole in the in the dressing room and uh, just making fun of him because he was, hey, guys, 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 you know, and uh, can get out of there because he was taped with the duct tape, you know, and then, and then they start throwing, like, some sandwiches and fruits and, you know, we had a buffet, like, in the room, so... Start throwing all kinds of things of the buffet, you know, at him, and yeah, you know, all the boys were laughing at this, you know, because it's pretty funny. But in the meantime, it's a human being there, and uh, uh, Jacques just got uh, at one point it was enough, so it's, it, he he told the guy to stop it, you know, the Steiner, the guy stop it, you know, and uh, and uh, Rick said, ah, yeah, what are you gonna do, you know? So uh, he picked up an apple and threw it as fast and hard as he could. Uh, I wish that, that Rick didn't receive it in the forehead or in the face because he was going to be hurt, you know. And uh, the the pole where Dink was taped up was about that wide. And the uh, apple in his head was behind somehow, somewhere. And anyways, the apple just crashed on the pole. And uh, it was silent for a while, you know, like uh, tension, you know, ooh, something's gonna happen. So, and we're working against the Steiner right after that, you know, the, the <clears throat> match has not uh, been done yet, you know, so we're, we're going up in the ring. So we're like, uh, the adrenaline is there for the four of us because you give your body to the other guy and you just had a big argument and almost threw an apple on that forehead of someone and almost fucking knocked him out. And now you're working with him and you, you give him your old body. The guy can break you an arm or a shoulder They're or both anything. They're both wrestlers. Yeah, whatever, um, yeah. <laughs> so, so I was on the apron. I let them start. Rick and Jock just waiting for the rumble to explode and just getting to jump into the action and fight for real, you know? But I guess Jacques was respected pretty much. Was that uh, pretty much the only problem you had with him and it was cool after that? No, we had another problem with the Steiners and uh, Ludwig Borg one time. Uh, just after we got the straps, uh, the tag team championship, uh, tag team uh, belts. It's amazing. The, the Steiners, that kept going, that story. And now we're in Europe. So when we get in Europe, and you know how the tours were hard in Europe because, you know, you don't eat well, travel a lot. It's not fun. And uh, so we're in the dressing room, and when they found out that that thing didn't work with Ludwig, they, they, they took another approach, and they started insulting me, like, you know, in front of the boys, like really treating me like a jabroni, <laughs> you know, and then no respect. And I was looking back at them, and, and, and it, was, uh, it was mostly uh, Rick. I, Scott was not in that. It was mostly Rick, and, and uh, so uh, so he started insulting me, and I and I told him, I said, and I told him, I said, hey, excuse my language, but I said, fuck off, just fuck off, because I I'm not a fighter, but I hated what he did. The thing with Ludwig tried to get me, <laughs> so so I said, fuck off, and then he looked at me, and said, oh yeah, what you gonna do about? It? And when he said that, it's almost like two wires clicked in my brain or hit each other i don't know how it came and where it came from i swear to god it wasn't in my plan my match plan i grabbed an apple that was in a basket on the table 
And I turned around, and it was one of those red apples with five uh, nipples there, five ends of the, the pear yeah. apples there. And I just took that, and I threw it at his face as hard as I could. And I'm only like about 25 feet away. And he looked at me like this, and there was a pole the size of a, uh, my hand here. Like, you know, I don't know if you see it, just a pole. And I hit the pole right in front of his face, and the apple exploded everywhere in the dressing room and I looked at him and I said fuck off and I was like ready to fight and I don't want to fight I don't like to fight and he just turned around like nothing ever happened and then Sean Michael says cool it cool it draw cool it cool it Gotti you know is you know he, he's a badass so, uh, a giant giant stringer knows uh, uh, Scott's not real well too I said Scott ever starts Tapping his finger, I said, "Watch out!" <laughs> I said, "That's not good," because that's why that's what broke us up. He started he, he started believing things that the the gym was saying. I said, "Scotty, look at you! You look incredible. There's nobody can look better. Quit! What are you fucking?" Come on, man. That led up to a straight up shoot interview we had. That you could tell it was a shoot if you watch it good. And that was in the Cincinnati. And then we had the the pay per view slam parade that put the sign right together. Yeah. Did you see the Scott Steiner thing with DDP backstage when DDP jumped him over Kimberly or something? We're waiting at the live interview spot with Gene Okerlund and Scotty is trying to rip Dallas Page's eye out at Richmond Coliseum 40 feet away. So we get, we're starting here. 20, 20, 10, 9, 8. Before it got ready, he was right in place. And nobody knew. He just tried to rip out Dallas Page's eye. And we just played it all up. We are, me and Lex already had our, what are we going to say? So we, I, I, I said, Scott, you just go first. And then me and Lex would end it up because we already had the ending. So we had a plan for the ending. And so he, but he, but he made it in with his, his headgear and everything. And back then he was still, no, no chest problems or anything. He looked, he looked, he looked so great. I mean, he's one of the best buys I've ever seen. It really is. Your feud with Scott Steiner, a lot of people remember. What was he like backstage at that point? And uh, obviously, the terrible injury that happened to you. Now that injury was just my, my, you know, it was just a freak accident. But this is the thing about Scott. You know, I think we you hit it on it earlier. You know, Scott wasn't ever a great wrestler. Uh, never had a great mind for the business. But I'll never forget one time he was working with a guy called The Wall. I think Wall's name was Jerry Tootie, which is a really strange name. Passed away now. He passed away. Um, he was trying to talk to Scott about the match that night. And the, Jerry was a big guy like myself. But he was just like, man, Scott's just an angry dude. I mean, this is the thing is, is this is a guy running, you know, you got your champ. You can't have guys working with him not able to talk to him. And Scott really thought that that was appealing. And he really does, I think, today think that that's what got him over. Scott never got over in this business to where he drew money that I know of. Um, were you around when he had that backstage incident with Diamond Dallas Page, or was that before you returned? I was there. I just missed it. Okay. You know, but I think Dallas beat him up. I don't know what the story was. I wasn't there. Uh, I've only heard Scott's version of it. Um, now, for the injury that you suffered in the match against Steiner, was that your idea to jump off the rope? Because no, we didn't see that. that was Johnny Laurinaitis' idea. That's a guy, and another idiot, thinking that you know, jumping off the top rope wouldn't be just as exciting as a big boot out of the corner. I even went to him and said, man, I just had come back from shoulder surgery, really couldn't put my belt on at the time, didn't feel comfortable up there. He said, we've already got it into the mix of things we can't get out of it. Was there ever any legal situation with WCW uh, over them asking you to do a movie you weren't comfortable with? No. no. We interviewed Scott actually once, and when we asked him uh, who would win in a shoot between uh, the Road Warriors and the Steiners and your client, and said, uh, 
because of their amateur skills, this the Steiners. Uh, oh bullshit! By the time they would go for a single leg, they'd be knocked out. As soon as you dive, you punch and down the back of the head. Listen, just because Hawk and I were street guys doesn't mean that I didn't do amateur wrestling when I was younger. Now, was I the level of Scotty or Rick on wrestling? Amateur wrestling wise, that would kill us, and Scotty's right. But if, you're, if it's real, I'm not gonna sit there and let a guy go leg dive me. I'm either gonna kick him in the face or I'm gonna punch him in the head, and so is Hawk. So a street fighter, any day of the week, you can see, look at UFC. A lot of guys that win are not wrestlers. You know what I mean? But your cha some champions are, like Brock and a few guys that have been collegiate wrestlers are good. Steiner brothers are two great guys, man. I, got no I will have nothing bad ever to say about either one of them. Two of my closest friends, I remember when they both came out of camp. Uh, Robbie, Rick came out first. And uh, we were in AWA. Actually, we were filming TV in Winnipeg. What was it, for TSN TV, I think it was? Okay. And because uh, back then the rules were you couldn't film in the United States and carry the film over, you had to have the actual film footage in Canada on their cameras. So we're doing it, and I, I remember uh, pantsing Vern Gagne. <laughs> and Robbie was a rookie, and no, at that time, bro, nobody talked back to Vern Gagne. He was like the god of the AWA in the wrestling world, you know, Olympic wrestler, All American in Minnesota, everything else. And he's talking, and, and like for half an hour, we're all waiting around to do interviews, we're really bored, and I walk up to him, and I pants him and bring his pants all the way down to his ankles. Steiner lost it. They couldn't believe that someone would do that. I look back and said, what's he going to do, fire us? I mean, you know. You're so over it now. Yeah, well, you couldn't win. If there could be a, a second team, in your opinion, like in your opinion, who would be... Uh, your favorite tag team to have watched, for instance, throughout the years? Would the Steiners be up there? Steiners are right up there. Yeah. Steiners are up there. Who also are There's a lot of, bro, there's a lot of un, really not really well tag teams, okay? Okay, the Horsemen, phenomenal. Tully Bunch and Arn Anderson, two great. They helped talk on IL, crazy. Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express. So underrated as far as tag teams go. Like, bro, you remember at the end of the first Cold War when they put Ivan and Nikita Koloff against Hawk and I in the Great American Bash, and we both were heels. It turned us red, white, and blue USA. It came out with the American flag on a motorcycle. Are you kidding me? Yeah. The Russians against the American badasses turned us stone cold babyface. You know, good guys. And from then on, we never looked back. You know, there were some great teams. Crusher Khrushchev by Barry Dawson, who was Smash. It was Crusher Khrushchev and Nikita Koloff. Two big rushing boys that we fought. The Hart Foundation. You know, I mean, come on. We wrestled some monster teams. The Briscoes, the, the Funks. You know, the Funks let us beat us up all over Japan, which helped us in Japan. So, I mean, I think we're going to go down in history. There's a lot of great teams. But I think the Steiners, probably, have got to be at the top of that tier. Oh, he's an excellent person. He's from uh, Michigan and a great college athlete. You know what he can do? He's the legitimate article. He can... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but he can take anybody's fist and throw it in anybody's face and knock them out with their own fist. That is wildly strong. That's Scott Steiner. Ask him about it. He's the genuine article. Strongest man ever. Seen. Big Papa Pump. Oh, what can I say about Scotty? He's a... Uh... I'll tell you what, Big Papa Pump. I mean, <laughs> the freak, the live freak show. And that's what, uh, Scott is the greatest guy when you really, he's, he's not the easiest guy in the world to get to know by any means, but when you get to know him, he is a sweethearted person, a gentleman, a great amateur wrestler that mixed in his amateur style when when him and his brother were a tag team. And I was like, I, I'd been in the business for like 10 years. I went, I don't want to be booked against those guys. And I sure don't want that Frankensteiner. But, it, but it, I mean, what a body on him. I mean, he's built that body up and, you know, he sometimes uh, he reminds me of a young superstar Billy Graham. 
Yeah, uh, Scott Steiner to me is one of the, uh, obviously has one of the greatest physiques I've ever seen, uh, in professional wrestling or out of professional wrestling. And, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just amazed. I was thrilled to meet him for the first time in 212 and, uh, at an autograph event in Los Angeles and so impressed by him. And, uh, I'm just one of his biggest fans. And, uh, I, I kind of feel now how other of people have felt meeting me for the first time because I felt that certain tingle when I met Scott Steiner because I'm such a huge fan of his and I really appreciate his dedication and commitment uh, to bodybuilding and of course to wrestling obviously but uh, his commitment and focus and drive to attain a physique that he's attained is really quite amazing. And I think it ranks right up there with the Arnold Schwarzenegger type drive that a person takes that you have to have to have a, a physique like that. My brother, like I said, my brother just isn't gonna ever back down from anybody, you know? And he doesn't like Hogan to begin with. And he doesn't like Flair and, you know, he's, so my brother likes you, you're good. If he don't like you, he don't care. And he'll just do whatever he can. And, you know, my brother's been pretty successful and, and is with his money and everything, so money's never an issue for him. So when Hogan made some comments and stuff about the TNA and being down there and all that, my brother just let him have it. And then there was some things being said, and then my brother brought up some stuff that was pretty personal. It was true, but they didn't want it to come out. And so that's, and then, you know, of course, I don't know, I wasn't there. They said he said something to Hogan's new wife or a new girlfriend or something. I wasn't there. I didn't see any of it. But uh, I know Hogan. I know le the legality issues of it. Yet he did. There, there was a lawyer, a couple of lawyers hired, and there was some stuff taken out. But my brother ain't backing down from nobody. Nothing, yeah. you know. So. And it turns out everything he said about TNA has been proven true. true. <laughs> yeah, everything, everything, you know. That's. I think that's the point. Of, you know, my brother. He says it. And it, it, it's kind of raw and, you know, off whatever it is, but it's always true or it always comes true. And so, it's you know, it's not this fictitious stuff that he made. Everything that he validates or says is comes true or is true. And he, sometimes just people just don't like hearing it. You know, I think that's what the heart that people have. And he's like the only one that'll say something. Everybody's worried about, oh, don't do that. You know, you'll lose this or you'll, you know, you won't be in the Hall of Fame. My brother don't care. Yeah. You know? He just say what he wants to say, and he operates a restaurant now too, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, he uh, he owns the Shilling franchise down in Georgia, and he's got one in Florida and a couple in Georgia. Do you want to start two or three in Georgia? So, um, good friends with the uh, franchise franchise she with the Shoney's uh, Corporation there, and so. He's doing well. You had a couple of uh, successful uh, Canadian Championship defenses against Scott Steiner, who's. Uh, Known for being pretty hot tempered, but we've all, he's always been pretty easy to deal with in Great North Wrestling. What are your memories of your matches with him, uh, which were classics? I guess you had three all together. Let me just first say that Scott Steiner is someone that has really not been given his just due by the wrestling community, by the internet wrestling community. Um, Scott Steiner is a tremendous talent. Like looking at it objectively, in his prime with the Steiner brothers, you know, the appearance, the physique, all that aside, his in-ring skills, second to none. Um, from a pure wrestling standpoint, the explosiveness, the size, the power, uh, just a great in-ring performer. And a lot of that gets sh overshadowed by Big Papa Pump. But, I mean, he had the personality. He had the mic skills. You can go back and watch Scott Steiner. Uh, you know, I, I was thrilled to be able to get to do a promo against Scott Steiner in multiple promos against Scott Steiner because I think he is one of the best on the mic. He's up there with The Rock, with Steve Austin, with Hogan. Scott Steiner has not only the dialogue, but he has the viciousness and he can tear someone apart, oftentimes, you know, telling the actual truth. Um, Scott Steiner is very underrated, but getting to work with him was a huge thrill for me, let alone getting to work with him three times. Um, I think my greatest accomplishment in those three matches would be the third time that we had worked and he had threw out an idea and I said um, well you know we can just go with that that's fine you're the veteran and he said to me no I want your opinion because your ideas are good too so do you think this is a good idea 
and you know he let me lead the matches and everything. Um, nothing but good with Scott Steiner. Nothing but good. This is Hannibal from thehannibaltv.com. I'm also one of the directors for Great North Wrestling. We used Scott Steiner three times in Great North Wrestling, once in 2010, and we had a crowd of over 3,000 fans, and twice in 2012. The first 2012 event had 1,200 fans. The second 2012 event had... 800 fans in attendance, so obviously he drew very well. He did publicity leading up to the events. He went over and above putting out a phenomenal effort in his matches. I believe all of his matches that he had for us went over 15 minutes long, and he really went above and beyond as far as putting the guy over who he was in the ring with, unlike a lot of legends out there. As far as how he was to deal with as a person, very professional. So I would highly recommend Scott Steiner to any independent company out there. Uh, my dealings with him were all very positive. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.